The Death Knight is, in my opinion, one of the strongest levelers in Cataclysm for several reasons. Some of the new additions to our toolkit makes us absolute beasts in the open world, and our self-healing, act mitigation, and AoE damage makes us the strongest solo dungeon levelers by far. I have spent way more time on the beta than I care to admit, and as such, I have compared and contrasted several leveling methods and came up with several builds to accomplish the goal of getting to 85 as soon as possible. Let's answer one question first. Why would we want to get to 85 as soon as possible? Well, the answer comes down to how sweaty of a player you are. Because if you want to maximize your player power before the raid, then speed leveling will be quite important for two reasons. First, with the increase in the valor point cap, it'll be all the more important to cap out your points each week, and if you're looking to raid on multiple tunes, then getting the leveling done and over with in an efficient manner will be all the more important. Second, the exalted trinkets from Tolbarat are extremely good for Death Knights, and you want to make sure to have one ready before the raid tier is released. This is technically doable in 7 days, but having some extra time so you have some leeway in case you can't do every single daily every single day will never be a bad idea. Alright then, let's take a look at the different strategies we have available to us. We have 4 different leveling strategies that are all viable. Questing, solo dungeon farming, hyper spawn farming, and dungeon farming. Before you get started on any route, you can prepare your quest log before the expansion is released in order to jumpstart your leveling, and if you want to know more about what quests to prepare, I have three different routes so you can check out in my pre-questing guide video. Alright, let's start out with the strategy that I think that most people end up doing, which is questing. Now, questing routes are very linear in Cataclysm, so we will not be looking at how to quest, rather what build you should use to get through the questing as efficiently as possible. And the absolute best build you can use is the Grip Strike build. This build is made incredibly broken by a few different factors. First is Unholy Command, which resets your death rip cooldown every time you kill something. Second is Butchery, which gives you 20 running power every time you kill something. And third is Unholy Presence, which reduces your global cooldown to half a second and gives you 15% movement speed. And the fourth is having two Oracle Trinkets, which you get from Exalted with the Oracles. This means that every single time you kill something, you'll have a full running power bar and a grip ready to simply grip and one-shot everything in your path, properly fulfilling that Death Knight RP. In addition to those four pickups, we'll ideally want to run with a two-hander, picking up the Runic Power Mastery for 30 extra Runic Power, along with these talents and Glyphs. Glyph of Frost Strike, Dark Sucker, and Death Grip will be the ones that are most important for enabling this build. As you start getting up in levels, having a weight to self-sustain will be very important, which is why Dark Sucker is so important. As we're spamming Frost Strikes for pretty much 90% of our leveling, that means that spending a Frost and Unholy Rune on a Death Strike to heal yourself for 20% will be very worth it. We reforge everything we can into Mastery while focusing secondarily on hits. It's absolutely fine to go over the hit cap as we will start dropping in hit very quickly as we level. Rotation-wise, you generally want to forego putting up diseases and just grip and frost strike until your runic power depleted. Then obliterate until the target is dead. Once you get higher up in levels, you can start the fight with the Howling Blast to get frost fever on the target, but I generally never recommend plague striking. Then of course we pick up two points in On a Pale Horse to speed up the traveling process. If you are a filthy casual who haven't spent over 20 days to gain the trust of these shiny crazed oracles, then doing the same build with normal trinkets will be just fine. It'll just be slightly slower, and you may find yourself sometimes with empty globals. If you have Deathbring as well, remember to have a cancel or a macro for the trinket tied to your flying mount. While running this build questing on the beta, I was able to get over 2 million experience per hour, but that was pretty much without any competition. The launch could be an absolute mess, or it could be layered up the wazoo. Either way, the benefit of questing to 85 is that you'll get a bunch of reputation in order to unlock 333 and 346 item level gear right at 85, and you will get a bunch of gear as you get to the later levels, making obtaining that 329 item level 2Q heroic dungeons easier. But to those who are uninterested in gambling on the open world being playable on launch, we have solo dungeon farming. This is a strategy that I would personally only pursue between level 80 to 82, but it can be done all the way up to 85, granting ridiculous experience while making you fall behind in other aspects. And keep in mind that one of the goals with reaching 85 early is to be able to queue for heroic dungeons for the cap, which you will need 329 item level to do. Getting to level 85 in full ICC gear will be quite an uphill battle, so doing this all the way should really only be reserved for alts. With starting Halls of Lightning, simply going from pack to pack. We want to make a full loop of the dungeon, while ideally skipping the first and the last boss before going out to reset. 
Our route should take around 12 minutes, but if you're faster, then try to find a way to incorporate more mobs, and if you can't, then take those extra minutes before the instance cap reset to use the restroom or grab a snack. Here are the talents and glyphs that I would use for this strat. Make sure to have a wormhole or heartstone near Old Art so you can go back to your DK class trainer at 81 to learn Outbreak. This strategy was nerfed before release in the original Cataclysm, but we're now mere hours away from release and it has remained unchanged. But be warned that it may or may not function the same as it does on the beta and PTR. Doing this will grant you around 3 to 3.5 million experience per hour, and once you hit 83, you can head to Blackfoot Cavern to do the same, but with slightly more experience. If you plan to do this at release, then head to Hulse of Lightning now to start practicing a route that works for you. Doing this strat along with solid prequesting will get you to 82 in under 1.5 hours. The third strat is similar to the second, but instead of going mad by looking at the same walls in Halls of Lightning, we'll go mad farming mobs in the open world. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I am not necessarily an expert in every open world strategy, but I have found an open world farm that will grant you up to 4 million experience per hour in Deepholm. The footage of me doing this is from a very undergeared feral druid, which was all I had available between level 82 to 85 where I was very easily able to clear between 3 to 3.5 million experience per hour by simply going from pack to pack. The location is right here on the map and could absolutely be a very viable strategy if you get to deep home ahead of the pack with a good prequesting stack and dungeon farming. I would personally run the same build as a Hulse Lightning build, but there's potential for a Frost build with chill blades to a weak height the mobs. Lastly, we have dungeon spamming as a 5-man group. This strategy I would only pursue if I have a 5-man group with players that I know and trust. But even so, in my opinion, it's inferior to other strategies. It'll grant you more experience than questing, especially if there's more competition, but worse than going solo. You won't be able to get any reputation by doing the strategy unless you as a group head out to do a few quests in order to get friendly with the faction. But even so, the reputation would only start coming in after you get to level 83 plus dungeons. The benefit would be that you'll have the possibility of getting stacked with 333 item level loot and could potentially as a group start queuing for heroics earlier because of it. But the real reason you want to run with this strategy is if your guildies don't want to quest on launch and they're playing a class that is unable to solo level, then you'd be there as a helping hand to get the work done. In a dungeon cleave, I'd run a similar spec to the solo dungeon spec, going down into morbidity as you level up. I'd run with full DPS gear while reforging mastery, hit, and expertise. If you stuck around until the end, then now would be a good time to head over to check out the pre-requesting guide that I released a while ago. And if you've already seen it, then thank you very much for continuing to watch my content. The support over the last few months have been incredible. There's plenty of more content to come, so if you want to see more from me in the future, then make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.